Reports of extensive damage in Dominica from Hurricane Maria. Our top story in the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Tuesday, September 19. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Dominicans are today getting a clear picture of the extent of the damage caused by Hurricane Maria, which slammed into the island last night. There were several reports of roofs being blown off in various parts of the island by the Category 5 storm. There has so far been very little communication into and out of Dominica since the passage of the storm. The hurricane hit two years after Tropical Storm Erica caused millions of dollars in damage. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said in a Facebook post last night that the initial reports are of widespread devastation. We have lost all that money can buy and replace, Skerritt said. He also reported that the roof of his own official residence was blown away by Hurricane Maria. And according to the 11 o'clock advisory, Maria is moving toward the west-northwest near 10 miles per hour, and this general motion is expected to continue through tomorrow night. On the forecast track, the eye of the storm will move over the northeastern Caribbean Sea today before passing near or over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico on Wednesday. Maria is packing winds of 160 miles per hour with higher gusts. The strength of the storm is expected to fluctuate during the next day or two, but it is expected to remain an extremely dangerous Category 4 or 5 hurricane until it moves near or over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, the Barbados Defense Force will be deploying personnel to provide humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to Dominica following the passage of the hurricane. The BDF has launched an appeal for a donation of supplies such as bottled water, medical supplies, canned foods and baby items, as well as personal hygiene items. BDF spokeswoman Captain Maria Moore says they can be taken to the Coast Guard base on Spring Garden Highway or the BDF headquarters, St. Anne's Fort. And the Met Office has downgraded the flood warning for Barbados to a flood watch. It will be in effect until midnight tonight. The Met Office is urging residents to continue to be on the alert and take all necessary precautions. A high surf advisory and a small craft warning have also been extended to midnight. In other news this afternoon, government is making major legislative changes to bring Barbados in line with international standards on the rights of the child. Minister of Social Care Steve Blackett says government has been working on a number of initiatives that focus on the protection and rights of children. In that regard, the Frendel Stewart administration is now reviewing over 30 pieces of legislation with a view to creating a single act. The Barbados government has been encouraging and supporting the enactment and review of national legislation to ensure its compatibility with relevant international standards of the rights of the child, in particular, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and in this regard, there has been a review of 37 pieces of legislation affecting children, women, and their families, with the view of creating a unified Children's Act, which would bring together all best practices that Barbados had followed over the years, in addition to other international best practices. There have already been amendments to the Maintenance Act, Cap 216, and the Domestic Violence Protection Orders Act, Cap 138 to ensure that children in Barbados are protected. Blackett was addressing the 92nd regular meeting of the Directing Council of the Inter-American Children's Institute at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. Who call and get your yarns and potatoes? Wait, my girl, how you want to see for long? I can't, how you keep it, but you don't sell any nation paper no more. But that paper ain't selling, they must know it stop selling that. Oh. Look, one time, I would have make a little dollar from the sun to sun. But when Sunday night, I'm still trying to get the weather there. <laughs> but you know, you can't call that the sun to sun no more. You're going to call that sunset news. Call it at night time, that news stale. People complain that they ain't got nothing in it to read, and the price keep going up all the time, all the time. A woman abused me so sick the other day, telling me that she just read Barbados today or life for free. Mm -hmm. I can take that abusing soul, so I switched to my potatoes and yams. Well, let me tell you, if pork selling, you got to raise pigs. How much for the yams? Oh, 75 cents a pound. Oh. But that's cheaper than that stale news. Give me. How much you want? A pound. Only a pound? Anyhow, these eating well good. Let me wrap them up for you. Come. The Barbados Today, news you can trust.
Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. The U.S. Coast Guard has seized an estimated 1,800 kilograms of cocaine valued at over 50 million U.S. dollars in the Caribbean Sea. The Coast Guard says the drugs were intercepted last month by crew members from the Qatar to Homa, who intercepted a 226-foot tanker suspected of smuggling contraband. And finally, on the international scene, Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi today condemned human rights violations in the Rakhine state, saying violators will be punished. However, she did not address UN accusations of a campaign of ethnic cleansing by the military. We get the details in this Reuters report. We feel deeply for the suffering of all the people who have been caught up, caught up in the conflict. A much-anticipated State of the Nation address by Myanmar's leader, but despite the country's Rohingya Muslim crisis, Tuesday's speech by Aung San Suu Kyi did not carry the message that many wanted to hear. The Nobel laureate avoiding claims of abuse and ethnic cleansing in the lawless western state of Rakhine, despite widespread accusations of rape, burning homes and systemic killing by the military. More than 400,000 Rohingya have now fled the country fearing for their lives. But while Suu Kyi acknowledged there's a clear problem, We condemn all human rights violations and unlawful violence. She stops short of any specific criticism. International pressure is mounting over Suu Kyi's silence on the crisis. And as Antony Slodkovsky reports from Yangon, her speech seems to have raised more questions than answers. Aung San Suu Kyi claims, quite surprisingly, that there have been no clearance operations, as the military refers to them, since September the 5th. It raises the question as to what has been going on in Rakhine for the last two weeks and why there have been burnings of villages visible from Bangladesh even until fairly recently. Quite frankly, it appears as if what has not been said is almost as significant as what has been addressed. Suu Kyi did promise that rights violations would be investigated and punished, but Myanmar has a patchy record when it comes to justice in Rakhine. That's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good afternoon.